What's up, guys? Today, we're going to be covering the ulnar collateral ligament sprain. This is at the elbow. Again, as I was just saying, there is an ulnar collateral ligament that is located down in the wrist. That one, in, the mechanism of injury is a little different, but the ulnar collateral ligament that we're going to be discussing today is in the elbow, and it is a sprain. Remember, that is a tear of a ligament. A strain is a tear of either the muscle or the tendon. So let's get into the anatomy real quick out here, everybody. So the anatomy associated with this is going to be the ulnar collateral ligament, which is also called the medial collateral ligament of the elbow. Remember, we have an MCL in our knee. We also got one in our elbow because our elbow is the knee of the upper extremity. Everyone gets scared of the upper extremity. It's the lower extremity just up top and less weight vary. It's, it's, it's pretty similar. So this is going to be located on the medial side of our elbow. So this is going to be our pinky side of our elbow located right on here in this bad boy, kind of hanging out with some of our other structures here. We see our ulnar nerve comes kind of close towards it. Actually, you're able to palpate the ulnar nerve if you like kind of slight bend in the elbow. You kind of feel this, feel your medial epicondyle of your humerus kind of go in there. There's a little drop off. If you press in there, you'll notice your pinky goes numb. That is your ulnar nerve. So kind of close in there kind of into the cubital tunnel there, just kind of fun things going on. But our ulnar collateral ligament is on the medial side of the elbow, so our pinky side. And this is something that tends to have a lot of problems with our throwers. So what is the etiology of a um, ulnar collateral ligament sprain? It is going to be excess stress on the elbow into extension. So elbow extension coming all the way back into some elbow flexion as well. So it kind of goes extension into flexion kind of thing. And what ends up happening is this throwing motion. So this is going to cause an increased valgus stress on the elbow. So valgus, remember uh, my one uh, professor in school would always say valgus and like hit himself in the stomach kind of thing. And so that would be pressure towards the medial side of the elbow, pushing in with a blow from the outside in. So that throwing motion coming all the way back, you can see this individual right here. Actually, I think when I do Google this, this is somebody who actually had a partial tear to his UCL. And so it's very, very, very far back. You can see that the main pressure point, I mean, if you try to put your arm into this position, you can already feel that it's pushing on the medial side of your elbow because that's the one that's facing the sky. And you can see that that just torque on the elbow, pulling it back to whip it forward is what's going to cause a tear on the UCL. And so this happens usually due to a repetitive, you know, overuse injury. That's why we really worry about kids having too much, you know, throws per game because they're going to end up overusing their elbow and then end up needing what's called Tommy John surgery by the time they're like in college at the like maybe earliest kind of thing. Um, maybe even in high school, who knows? And so this is caused due to a valgus stress, stress to the medial side of the elbow. So remember it's a valgus stress. That's very important. I'm going to repeat that like 50 times, just so then you understand where the stress is being placed or valgus is towards the middle from the outside in. Um, and it could also be traumatic injuries, such as a crush injury. We might see this with workers, just like anything that like, if it's going to mess up that part of the elbow there, you'll also see, you know, ulnar nerve damage along with it. It could just completely wreck the medial side of the elbow. But what we'll see with this one is going into an extreme shoulder external rotation with some elbow flexion slash extension, but more all the way into that shoulder extension and elbow external rotation, which really just pushes forces on that part. So pitchers in baseball and pitchers... Yeah, pitchers in baseball, anybody who's throwing a lot. We see this also sometimes with uh, quarterbacks in football. But when we see UCL injuries, we're thinking of baseball thrower, pitcher, whatever. That's kind of the person we're thinking of. So what does this look like? Um, I have this picture over here on the left. If you're not seeing this because you're on a podcast or anything, check out the YouTube video. We can see that there is some bruising and ecchymosis along the medial side of the elbow, some swelling as well. So you're going to see some edema. And so what's going to happen is in order to confirm via, you know, a manual test, the only way to truly confirm that there is soft tissue damage is to do an MRI. But what we would do is be the valgus stress test at the elbow. It's the same thing at the knee. So instead of pushing the knee in, you're pushing the elbow in medially and seeing if there's any loose clunking around, not looking too good. 
instability is basically what we're looking for. So you're going to see instability at the elbow with open and closed chain exercises. So open chain would be like a bicep curl, closed chain would be a push up. Even if this person got onto all fours, you would see their elbow start to like kick in, kick out kind of thing, wobble around. It would not be looking too good. So gross instability at the elbow joint because the ulnar collateral ligament is responsible for, you know, holding the ulna to part of the humerus. So we'll see problems with that. You're also going to see like pain at the area, tenderness along the um, medial epicondyle into where the ulnar collateral ligament runs. And then we're also going to just see general decreased range of motion, either due to swelling or pain. So they might not be able to move it. We might see like that it literally looks like it's more range of motion because it's like popping out. We might even see a visible deformity at the like medial side of the elbow. If the tear is severe enough, like if it's a grade three, sprain that means that all the tendons are torn it's completely torn through even maybe with a grade two where we see like just a lot of fibers torn we might see a visible deformity where the elbow is kind of popping out in a real funky way and you're like that doesn't look right um and again this individual might even just have general pain trying to use the upper extremity like maybe pulling something towards them holding something in their hand just because it's super unstable and you'll just see like decreased use and disuse of the uh ulnar collateral of the upper extremity in general due to this tear. So how are we treating it? There is a, if it's a tear that needs surgical intervention, and this is what the boards is probably going to talk about. If it's a grade one, generally we follow the same thing as all other sprains kind of thing, you know, rest, make sure we're not overusing it, general increased range of motion, strengthening stabilization to get back to sport. That's a more conservative management. What the board's going to ask about is this very, very strict protocol for what's called Tommy John surgery. And this is just, you know, ulnar collateral ligament reconstruction surgery, but Tommy John shorter. So we're going to refer to it as that. And so this is a very long ass protocol. Like you thought your rotator cuff ones were long being three months. This is a whole year, baby. This person's not picking up a ball for at least nine months. So how is that working? This is going to take from the time they get the surgery to when they return to sport, it's about a year, like minimum, just due to the fact of how this specific ligament ends up healing. And it does end up healing sometimes stronger than it was before. That's why some people like weirdly got this as an elective surgery for these professional athletes. I don't know, it's beyond me, but you know what? It's your life, do your thing, man. Just have the right people rehabbing you. What we're gonna do as therapists is start with gentle range of motion to the elbow, going into resist progressive resistive exercises so as long as the protocol allows it. Once we've got range of motion back and we're starting with some strengthening, moving into those stability exercises, maybe weight bearing through the, the shoulders in either, you know, off the edge of the table kind of thing, um, maybe even into like a quadruped kind of position, just working on, you know, our proprioception in the elbow, because remember, we got this gross instability, we got to work back to, you know, contracting those muscles and using all those assist muscles to assist with stability at the elbow. The final stage of this would be returning to some higher levels of functioning. So our return to sport, we got a testing battery we can do for these individuals through, for like weight lifting and, um, you know, actions throwing everything like that like there's I could go into all of this but what essentially we're doing is we're going to slowly increase the force slash weight that's going to be placed on the UCL um and as we go along with that hopefully this individual returns to sport and ends up being okay so here's an example of the protocol um this is probably an older protocol but this is just a general thing so you know we see our acute stage we're just working on uh, keeping the muscles that work there, continuing to work to not let them have disuse atrophy, reducing pain, palliative modalities in those first couple of weeks, working on range of motion, gentle, gentle, and allowing the tissues to heal during that super acute stage. Cause this like three weeks is like when everything is like super, 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 like it could tear again. Um, as we go through that, we increase through full range of motion, making sure that we're trying to improve our muscle strength and make sure that the graft remains intact as we move past eight weeks. This is just according to this protocol. The boards isn't going to quiz you on protocols. I'm just kind of going through it so you can kind of think about it in your mind and see how all this that I just said on the previous slide comes together. But, you know, we start improving our muscular strength endurance, working on keeping that full range of motion because once we get it, we don't want to lose it. And then, you know, slowly as we go along and I'm talking like those this is eight to 24 weeks I mean those first like eight to like you know 16 20 weeks I mean you're just working on you know getting all your strength back and everything as you kind of lean more towards that 24 weeks you're working on you know 
motions that are similar to throwing, but not exactly throwing. And then as you get into 25 plus weeks, all the way up to what, 36 months, 36 weeks, what's 36 weeks? I don't know. Is that like nine months? I think that's like nine months. I don't know. Um, but then you're starting to, you know, increase your power, endurance, mobility, stability, all the stabilization stuff, going into those higher levels, returning back towards sport. And then at nine months, that's when you safely start adding in return to sport activities. So you can see how, you know, we start with that acute stage, uh, pain management, gentle range of motion, repair, restoring range of motion into our strengthening exercises, then our higher level strength, power and endurance exercises into our stability exercises, then to our return to sport. So generally what's on this page, that is our rule of thumb for pretty much any surgical repair. Get rid of the pain, restore the range of motion, restore the strength, make the strength even more refined, work on stability, and then return to whatever you were doing at a higher level. That's the easy way to remember it. So key words here when we're talking about UCL stuff is that going to be a positive valgus stress test at the elbow. This is what is confirming that there is compromise to the ulnar collateral ligament. We'll see swelling, edema, bruising, ecchymosis, any of those things that we're seeing at the medial side of the elbow. Something happened over there. We're thinking probably UCL, if it's pain along the medial elbow as well. And we're definitely saying, yep, probably UCL if we're seeing that it's a baseball pitcher or like, Hey, you got like a 15 year old baseball player. That's been doing a hundred throws a game. I don't know. Something crazy like that. Like there's some crazy things out there. Why is his medial elbow hurting? Let's do a positive. Uh, oh, he's got a positive valgus stress test at the elbow. Well, he messed up his UCL. So tell his dad to stop putting him in the game. He needs to chill. But that's kind of what's going on when I'll start describing a scenario on the boards. And then you'll see pain when moving the elbow or any use of the upper extremity. Let's say all of a sudden they're like, I felt a pop as it went back. Not good. And then if it's a contact blow to the outside of the elbow pushing in, that could be the trauma that causes it. Because remember, trauma could be another thing. But just it's the baseball thrower. It's the baseball thrower. Like we can be stereotypical sometimes on the boards when it comes to figuring things out. So sample question, guys. A physical therapist assistant is treating a patient following ulnar collateral re ligament reconstruction surgery. The patient asks if they will be able to return to sport after six months of rehabilitation. What should the therapist tell the patient? One, there's a probability that that can happen if you attend therapy and perform your home exercise program. Two, quote, that's impossible given your surgical history. Three, Explain to the patient that their year-long protocol and the steps needed to ensure proper rehabilitation. Uh, explain to the patient their year-long protocol and the steps needed to ensure proper rehabilitation of the elbow. Or four, tell the patient that they will likely never be able to return to sport again. So I'll give you guys a second to think about that. All right, guys, so the answer is number three, explain to the patient their year-long protocol and the steps needed to ensure proper rehabilitation of the elbow. So first of all, six months after rehabilitation, realistically, this patient's not going to be there yet. I know a lot of us like would be like, yeah, it'll happen if you show up and do your HEP. Yeah, that can work for most of our other, you know, patients who come in for therapy, but uh, our post-surgical people we can't fight against biology. So we have to educate our patients on like, Hey, like here's the healing process. This takes a while. We need to make sure that like the graft stays intact. We need to, you know, slowly reintroduce this because this is a very complex thing and, you know, showing them the protocol, kind of how I just showed you guys, it's a good way to educate the patient. And honestly, I've just sat down with the protocol in my hand and just pointed everything out to the patient. And if they still are like being annoying at the end of the day, I'll be like, we'll take it up with your surgeon because I don't want to get yelled at. I would like to continue working and doing my job. So uh, you're not doing that. <laughs> so it can come to the point, but remember our job is to educate the patients. Sometimes the surgeons only get like 15 minutes with them post-op to like explain stuff, have time to just be like, go to PT and they'll tell you what to do. Um, sometimes you do have to sit down with the patient, educate them about their protocol and kind of what's happening with their biology and their body. Cause they get frustrated. They want to be better. I'm sure we've seen this with our ACL patients too. They're like, I want to get back to doing the thing. Can I like be done now? Um, so yeah, telling a patient it's impossible given the surgery, that's not enough information. You need to make sure you sit down and like fully explain because these are people, they're curious. They want to know what's going on with their body. They want to know the reasons why things are happening. 
you want to make sure we explain it to them. You know, there, there are people too. And then telling the patient they'll never be able to return the sport again. First of all, that's going to make someone never come back to therapy. Um, that's not good. And unless there's some reason why somebody shouldn't return back to sport, that you are not the person who's going to be telling them that that's on the physician to make sure that they kind of tell the patient all of that stuff. So yes, I just threw this in here because I want you guys to understand you might have something where you need to educate the patient on, you know, the healing process, why we do the things that we do, explanations of things, because a lot of patients, they do trust us, but it's kind of the thing with your parent when they're just like, well, you have to do this because I said so. Like, why? but why? Like patients are going to ask why. And that's why we have to understand all of this stuff. Because remember our first job is we're teachers, we're educators of our patients. So I want you guys to kind of be aware of the things you need to do to educate your patients, such as telling them, Hey, got this long ass protocol. Here's what it's about. Here's why we're doing things at certain stages. This is what you can show them. They like, Hey, so in like two weeks, look what we have to look forward to. We're going to start doing some of these things. What are some, you know, for like, you know, higher level athletes that understand exercises, what are some things we want to get back to? How about let's do some bicep curls and stuff? They're like, yeah, curls for the girls or something like that. I don't know. But like, you know, have them be involved in their care, have them be aware of their care and, you know, keep them progressing on the right path. And the board's going to ask you some things like that as well. Patient education. When they say patient education, sometimes they want you to elaborate. This is a question like that. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful in explaining uh, ulnar collateral ligaments tears and I will see y'all in the next one.